foreign banners waved upon the walls. The golden sun and General Epdahi's crest on Rivia's walls. The walls of home. There was somber silence among the troops, the glee and pride of many triumphs suddenly gone. For each knew if the queen ordered an assault, most would lie dead by sunrise. Your Majesty, began Reynard in a reassuring tone. We needn't strike quickly. We've time on our side. To prepare would be wise. Two months, I wager, perfectly enough. We stop supplies from getting through. They'll capitulate, I've little doubt. Or at worst, be too weak to defend the fortress. Reynard's reasoning was sound. There was no need for urgency. Meave had the upper hand for the first time in this war. Let Epdahi wait, said Meave, her eyes trained on the citadel. Let him watch from those walls as we reclaim our realm, village by village, town by town. Follow me. Meave turned her back to the castle, eager to take the fight elsewhere. Meave had returned to the foot of Rivia Castle. Tense and silent, her troops awaited her command. Let Epdahi wait, said Meave, her eye. Meave had returned. These invaders have grown fond of Rivia Castle, said Meave. So let them stay and rot. Reynard, erect road barricades and guard posts between city and citadel. Gascon, seize all boats, barges, anything that floats. Stop anything from entering from the lake. Move! Soon, Rivia Castle stood isolated from the world outside its walls. All roads leading to it were blocked, impassable. Fishing boats, a cordon, embraced the fortress on Loch Escalot. The lanterns on their bows glowed like fireflies in summer. Then, an emissary from the castle brought a message for the Queen. General Epdahi wished to meet, face to face, and half the way between the Citadel and the Lyrian camp. Well, well, some general, smirked Gascon. We've barely snapped the trap shut, yet he's already shaking in his knickers. Meave proceeded to the meeting point without delay. A lone rider soon appeared on the horizon. He came adorned in rich black robes, their golden trim shimmering in stray sunbeams. She'd seen him before, in Edirne through the Megascope. You came as I requested. Good. Very good. I couldn't possibly refuse such a courteous invitation, especially as compared to your previous missive. The art of diplomacy, you've improved your grasp. Your realm fell quickly. I expended little strength in seizing it. This left me much time to study. But please, we must set aside this bitterness. I'd like to formally welcome you to Rivia, dear Queen. I see you've readily adopted the role of gracious host in my home. In point of fact, I've grown fond of the castle. Fortifications impressive, atypical of the north. Not so your brave soldiers, whom we shall pick off like ducks. I pity them. Dry your eyes, General. Rest easy. I've no plans for a quick assault. I shall first wait to hear the rumbling in your bellies. Remarkable. You truly believe you can win this war? I've not been in the North long, but have discovered something all the same. You don't grasp complex ideas. You know Nilfgaard is large, but your minds don't fathom its enormity. You see, for every army you defeat, another will come to take its place. One larger and better equipped than the one before. Even now, as we so pleasantly chat, Army Group East is en route to lift your siege. Due to arrive tomorrow. And do you know what will happen when they do? They will crush you against your own castle's walls, like the maddening flea you are. Enough. 
I'll not be insulted, General, nor intimidated. Then I wish you a splendid night, Majesty. Get some rest. You'll need it tomorrow. Indeed I will. For with raised visor, I shall be at the fore, unlike you. In my home, in the civilized world, a general commands his force. He does not rush and thrash about like some rabid hound. You're not at home, General. You're in the north, in my home. But you're right, I will rest. While you should pray to all your gods that we don't meet amidst the fray. Without awaiting a response from General Ep Dahi, Meave pivoted and turned toward camp. Her pace was quick, despite a heavy heart. And I thought Rosberg had strong walls. No turning back now. Victory or death. I'll fight by your side, my lady. To the very last. I'll fight by your... It's gonna be one hell of a night! Ah! 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 Don't you dare sign the retreat, got it? My axe craves blood! Nilfgaardian blood! Gonna be one... Meave's closest advisors already awaited her in the command tent. In a few brief words, the Queen gave a report of the meeting, only with great effort masking the quavering in her voice. An army, an immense one, approaches from the west. If we meet in open battle, we stand not a chance. Damn it! Why did no one warn me? Our scouts were discovered. Captured. It must be that. We must flee? Not at all heroic, I admit, but sure as hell better than being trampled into the dirt. Easily said, but for a problem. Our force is chiefly infantry. The army that draws near includes cavalry, several regiments. We cannot hope to escape them. We cannot hope to hide. What do you advise? We've two options. Capitulate. Out of the question. Or take the castle. Tonight. Suppose for a moment it's possible. Tell me how and at what cost. Are we to scale a mountain of comrades' corpses to reach the top of the wall? I know we're at war and many die. But to command our troops to take that citadel is to condemn them to certain death. Rivia's walls are unassailable, I fully agree. But there's more than one way to take any fort, and this fort too. I think I like where this is going. I know this citadel like no one else. I know it's one potential weakness. The boat landing. Wait. That narrowest of piers between the two turrets? The one where the fishermen would land? The same. As I'm sure you recall, Your Grace, at that narrow pier's end stands a narrow door leading straight into the fortress. A small detachment could approach unnoticed, overwhelm any sentries, and get inside. What then? They would need to pass through the fort to the winch in the guardhouse, open the gate for the rest of the force. Reynard. I'll be honest, this sounds right mad. Perhaps, but as options go, we have it alone. And I'm to choose to send folk there? Most certainly to die? You needn't choose anyone, for I volunteer. And will take only those willing to do the very same. Bloody wretched plan. And you've a better one, do you? Of course. I'll go instead. Beg your pardon? I don't. Face it, Reynard, you couldn't sneak past a corpse. Sound like a bloody tambourine in that armor. Apart from which, 
You're Maeve's right hand. So you ought to be by her side when the fighting starts. Firstly, Reynard, I'm grateful. Well done, my friend. Thank you, Your Grace. But truth be told, I did indeed hear you walking to the tent from the other side of camp. And yes, you know Rivia Castle better than anyone else, but the assault must transpire silently. Gascon will lead the force. Understood, Your Grace. Cheers, Meave. I'll try not to disappoint. You won't, I'm sure. God speed you on your way, and please, try your damnedest not to die. Gascon hand-picked his men, those most adept with daggers, not swords. Noiselessly, they glided through the dark toward the castle, the light of its lanterns blurred by the evening mist. Meave watched anxiously as the boats glided away, her heart pounding in her ears. All depended on this mission. The fate of her realms, perhaps all the north, the lives of her troops, and her own. Now there was naught she could do but wait. Good luck, she whispered, gazing at the fortress walls, cloaked by the dark that seemed to surround all now. Quick and painful this'll be. See to the winch! We'll hold them off! Coin never stinks, no matter how rank the pouch. Huh! 
Coin never stinks, no matter how rank the pouch. to the winch. We'll hold them off. Knock them off the wall! Let's teach them to fly! See to the winch. We'll hold them off. The Lyrians prepared for battle. Their silence absolute. In darkness, illuminated only by the pale light of the moon. Meave was restless. She paced nervously in a circular pattern, awaiting the signal they'd agreed upon. Blast, it's taking long. Much, much too long. Finally, a torch's faint glow appeared atop the towering walls. It disappeared, then glowed again, and one more time around. Meave leapt in the air, and as she did so, barely stifled a cry of utter joy. They made it. It worked. Moments later, Lyrians in the hundreds burst from the trees. <laughs> the Nilfgaardian defenders loaded their catapults and ballistae. They did so slowly, convinced the castle walls remained impenetrable. 
Then they heard chains grinding and clinking, and the sound sent shivers down their spines. Bewildered, they watched the main gate rise as the attacking force rushed forth. General Epdahi dispatched an elite unit to take back the winch at once. Yet he saw this was in vain and all was lost when Meave rode into the castle courtyard. Meave had begun the day known as a great warrior. Yet by night's end, legend was the cloak she wore. Her shield stopped powerful blow after blow as her blade found gaps in her foe's black armor. At first, Nilfgaardian scoured the fray in search of the queen, hoping to prove great heroes. Soon, she was their chief scourge, and they began to flee before her blade that sung their death. Retreat! Retreat! What was this extraordinary vigor that surged through Meave? Naturally, she wished to liberate her castle and realm, drive off the invaders, defeat the arrogant General Epdahi. But in that moment, above all else, she longed to fight her way through to the guardhouse and bring Gascon's party relief. Follow me! Move! Move! As she stepped through the door into the tower, the silence told Meave she'd arrived too late. Gascon's men lay slaughtered in pools of their own blood. The man himself slumped over the winch's crank. Three arrows in his chest rose and fell with his each ragged breath. Meave tore off her cloak and pressed it against him, desperate to stem the bleeding. Help's on the way. Don't you even think of dying? <sighs> you know... <clears throat> Wheezed Gascon, a slight smirk on his lips. I always enjoyed doing things just to spite you. Medics on the stairs in the guardhouse steps away, heard a long, blood-curdling wail. They entered the room to find the queen kneeling, pounding the wall with her fists, her eyes flooded with tears. Gascon lay motionless beside her, covered by her cloak. The queen rose, her fists clenched, her shoulders rigid, her knuckles white. Her face betrayed no sorrow, no despair, just rage, hot as a forge, immeasurable. Now's not the time to mourn, seethed Meave, struggling to stay calm. Now's the time for war, for slaughter, revenge. With victory today, we'll recover our home, return to our kin and set our blades aside at last. Yet until victory is ours, they must drink. Drink greedily of Nilfgaardian blood! The Lyrians were at the brink, near their breaking point. They'd followed me for thousands of miles, over snow-clad peaks, through forbidding swamps. They'd fought, survived countless battles at her side. And though their gazes were now weary, she knew they'd follow her into fire. Your Grace, the black clad. They've holed themselves up in the upper keep. We went to breach the wall. Alas, to no avail. Meave nodded, twirled her sword, then leapt upon a mount. Her eyes spoke pure determination. So we'll bloody well try again. Your head on a pike! <sighs> hey, 
Straight! I must thank you. Your fortress has superbly solid walls. <laughs> uh, This could hurt. I do not need to hear this. Kill her! Willing and how, but these dumb boots are killing me.
The chase is on! by fools! Army's a waste of time for one like me. There's a time to reap, a time to sow. Poison. Oh. Her Majesty is exceptional. Anyone asks, you've not seen me. Ah, should have listened to me, old lady.
Archers, let it be night. Obscure the sun with arrows. Ballista, your command. This artist will be reaping black clad heads. Cursed traitors. to the front yet again. Prescription, a bit of blood letting. Curious case. 